In the last lecture, we encountered an error, and that error was that if the bullet is too fast, then it would just pass through the enemy, and we wouldn't be able to basically get the result that we wanted. And in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at a solution which we can use. So I've deleted everything from the player, player bullet parent. I've deleted that. And I have also, I've also deleted the player character as well as the enemy. So I'm just going to create a new player character, player character right here. And I'm going to make sure that we can see it. The Y should be one. And I'm just going to place it over here. So minus five. And I believe the camera is going to be fine, okay. And now we're just going to have a spawn point inside of this. So the spawn point is going to be for the bullet. So bullet spawn point. And we can take a look at scripts. So we will have the player bullet demonstration. I believe it's the player bullet demonstration. Let's see. Yes, that is correct. So the bullet spawn point is going to be somewhere over here. So it's going to be at uh, around uh, 1, probably 0 0.5. No, I think 0 0.75 is okay. All right. I'm going to drag and drop the bullet spawn point reference over here. And the bullet prefab is going to be inside of the prefabs folder. I'm going to drag and drop it over here. And let's uh, just click play and test it real quick. So the bullets are spawning, that's cool. Okay, now I'm just going to go and attach a Bridget body over here. So there is going to be a Bridget body over here. So I'm just going to add a component that's going to be Bridget body. I'll drag and drop the Bridget body over here. And now this the mass is going to be 50 and I'm just going to add this right here so freeze position and freeze rotation okay so now that we have that we are just going to create an enemy game object so i'm just going to in fact let me just duplicate this so i'll duplicate this and call this enemy character and it'll not have a spawn point it will not have the player bullet demonstration script we don't need that so i'll remove the component and once we have that, we're just going to tag this enemy and we're just going to make it over here. And it's going to be at zero actually, right there. So now that, that, so now that we have that, I'm just going to work in the bullet parent, player bullet parent script, which is, as you know, attached to the player bullet parent. So for that, I'm just going to first of all check if there's anything that we need to do. Rigid body is over there. Another thing that you probably need to do is you need to go to the rigid body and make sure that the collision detection is continuous and the interpolate is to interpolate. Okay, so now that we have that, we're just going to go to player bullet and we'll start working on the script. So the first thing we will do is we will get the uh, we will basically have a function which is going to be called the private void move the bullet and this is going to be this function will be used to move the bullet. Okay, now we are going to have a this is going to move the bullet using an impulse so it's going to be get component rigid body and we'll just add the force right here and this is going to be transform.forward multiplied by something very high so it's going to be let's start with something smaller so let's start with 100 and we will have force mode dot impulse we're going to call this in the start method, so move the bullet. We also need another variable, which I'm going to have right here. So this variable is going to be called the last position of rigid body. In fact, I should add it down 
after the move the bullet script. So this is going to be private vector three. And this is going to be last position of rigid body. And this is going to be a new vector three. This will store the position of the rigid body during the last physics step. I'm going to store the position of the rigid body over here. So in the start, I'm going to have the position. So moving the bullet using this function. And over here, setting the position of the rigid body of the last position of rigid body to the current position of the rigid body. And this is how we basically set the position. So now that we have that, we're just going to cast a something something that we haven't done before. And that is going to be called the overlap capsule, which is basically just like a capsule cast, except that it basically returns it, it returns every single thing that collides with instead of just one. So private void cast overlap capsule cast for fast moving bodies. This function will help us cast a overlap capsule cast which will work for very fast moving very fast moving bodies as a regular capsule cast will not excuse me i just need to okay so i apologize there i didn't uh, put my phone on silent okay bodies for very fast moving bodies as a regular capsule cast will not work for them Okay, so now that we have that, we're just going to go over here and we're going to take a look at the start point. So the start point is going to be the last position. So setting the start point, which is going to be where start point is going to be last position of rigid body. And the current position is going to be the end point setting up the end point. So where end point is equal to get component bridge body dot position. Okay, now that we have that, we're just going to use a overlap, overlap, uh, it's called an overlap capsule. And it's, it works just like the capsule cast. Of course, it's, it's done a different way. And before I forget, I should put this inside of a fixed update. So capsule cast overlap capsule cast for fast moving bodies. Okay, so now we're going to get to the capsule cast. So getting the radius of the capsule cast first. So the capsule cast radius is going to be 0 0.05. And I calculated this, this is the this is the radius that we require. Okay, and now we're just going to go and uh, just cast the capsule. So it's going to be war colliders collider array in fact it should be capsule overlap capsule cast overlap capsule cast hits and actually this is the code that we require so this is how an overlap capsule works using the capsule cast to get the hits so it returns an, an array of colliders. So the capsule cast, just like a, I apologize, the overlap capsule will work exactly like the capsule cast, except that it returns every single thing that it collides with. So instead of just returning a single game object or a single collider, it's going to return all the colliders that it collided with. So since we have an array, we are going to loop through all the hits. So once we loop through the hits, we're just going to check which one of the which one of these hits actually collided with the enemy. So we are going to first of all rename this. This should not be hit. It should be uh, collider to process. Collider being processed. In fact, collider being processed. 
And now we're just going to write if one of those colliders, if the collider tag is enemy, we're just going to uh, deactivate the bullet. So deactivate the, the bullet. Okay. So this is the solution for fast moving bodies. So let's take a look. If I click play, you can see that the collision is now working. You can see it over here. And uh, if I, it, this is very fast, but it's still working. The collision is working. And if I pause this actually and use this frame, next right here, you'll see that this is over here. This is working. And in order for me to demonstrate this, let me just go and draw this. So drawing the capsule cast, and this is how we're going to draw it. So you'll see it over here, hopefully. So I'll just click play. And I'll click next. So you can go frame by frame this button we've not used before. But if you pause the game and then you use this, you can actually go to the next frame. So you see that this is the line and the body is basically over here. So the problem was that the body in the next physics step wouldn't basically be being be calculated properly, but whereas this line is basically behind. So this is basically the the line that has been drawn in the last physics step. So you'll see it over here that the bullet is basically inside of this collider. And you can see it over here and the ray has collided. So now we have this situation right here. So now I can go ahead and just change this to something very large. So you'll see it like something like 5,000 just to give you an idea. And now I'm just going to click play and uh, hopefully this is going to work. I'll click pause and you'll see that, that the, the bullet is right over there and this huge line was drawn. So you can see that the bullet got deactivated. So this is one, one of the solutions that you can use for fast moving widget bodies. And uh, hopefully you'll all, you'll never miss a collision basically.